Alrighty, um, today I'm going to be tying a fly that's uh, my own invention and uh, I just got back from four days uh, out in Colorado. Um, got to fish some high mountain lakes for uh, wild greenback cutthroat and uh, a couple small creeks and this fly it performed really well for me. I caught about half of my fish on it. Um, start out I have Tiemco uh, 101, uh, which is just a straight eye, fine uh, dry fly hook. I like dry fly because it gives a little slimmer profile and uh, barbs are easier to smash down. Um, I would strongly recommend smashing down your barbs because most places um, where you do get the chance to fish for greenbacks, it is barbless. There are barbless regulations and uh, you're screwed if you're fishing barbless. And it just is so much better for the fish. Please, please debarb your hooks, Zach. Um, yeah, Zach hates barbless hooks. Alrighty, start out, I'm, uh, I got some tan uni thread, and I have already pre-clipped these three pieces of these three fibers of pheasant tail and made a little thread dam that will um, that will splay them out a little bit um, now just to make sure your body is nice and even I'm going to wrap these all the way up to the bead then all the way back to those tails now I'm going to tie in my rib which is going to be ultra fine uh, micro diameter copper wire. Um, now I'm going to take some olive hairs, some olive rabbit fur dubbing that I blended myself from a few different things, of, from a few different zonker strips. I'm going to put just a just barely a, a mist of dubbing. That's actually a little bit more than I should need on there and make a very lightly tapered body on there. This one's ending up a little chunkier than I would like. So I'm gonna But um they fished these these both fished they fished pretty equally uh chunky and ultra slim so uh, it's it's basically a matter of personal preference. Now I'm going to take the pheasant tail and uh, secure that down with a couple loops of tying thread. Now I'm going to take my rib and uh, closely and evenly uh, with evenly spaced ribs rib that uh, piece of pheasant tail in. Clip off that and I'm going to fold this back for a wing case. And now I'm going to do uh, a dubbing loop. And uh, secure that down. Let that off to the side. And this is one of the, I, I usually don't use wax, but this is the one application that I think requires a little wax because I'm using a uh, squirrel hair here. And this is a, this is like, a one to three ratio of squirrel hair to that olive rabbit for dubbing. So I'm just going to take a couple tiny pinches, jam them up there in that dubbing loop. Now, um, since I don't actually have a dubbing loop twister, I have this, uh, I'm, I use my whip finisher, which unfortunately was tangled in my flash of boo. And since it's squirrel hair, you're going to want to spin it and uh, while it's pinched, and then let go, and you'll see it spins nicely. That way, your fibers don't get trapped together while you're spinning it up like this. And then I added a couple more turns just to secure it in there more. Um, make sure that threads it snugly up against the bead and wrap a really really buggy thorax on this guy because these these are they just look great in the water 
and uh, get almost to the point of crowding the bead and then take my thread over tie that down clip off the excess of your dubbin loop now I'm going to take my stroke that down on either side take my pheasant tail in for a little shell back that wing case pull out the longest fibers on that thorax and uh, snip that strip of pheasant tail off and I'm going to take my whip finisher and I have a tiny bit of dubbing on there so that just kind of conceals the wraps a little bit and uh, there you go the the uh, <laughs> rabid squirrel nib um, it's just a great great pattern for trout everywhere I've tried from the Ozarks to the high mountain lakes in Colorado and uh, yeah hope you guys enjoy this if there's any patterns you'd like to see tied or you notice a sad lack of them on the internet um, just uh, hit me up on the comments and I'll see what I can do